Well, good afternoon, travelers. Today is another What's Up Wednesday. I know uh, some of you looking at this picture are saying, oh my gosh, you're wearing the same clothes every day. Uh, this is my jacket, and it is cold today, so I have my jacket on. Anyway, bear with me. Today, I'm going to discuss the burning question everybody has, and that is solar. What is it? How does it work? And how much do I need? So this is a two-part series on solar. It took me a little long to run it. So enjoy, and we all see you after the video. Well, first thing is to understand how solar works. Everybody asks you, how much solar do you have? How much panels do you got on your roof? How much of this you got? That's not the important question. The important question is, is how much storage you have. You can have all the solar panels on the planet and have no storage and it's not gonna do you any good at all. Your main objective is storage, okay? Think of it as like a water tank. You can have rain coming down by the buckets fulls, but if you don't have any place to put it, it just goes in the ground and soaks in and it's wasted. So what do you do? You put gutters up so you catch that water and then it goes into a container so that you can use it later. Now, that water then has to be filtered so that you can use it. And then it's distributed through a series of pipes and canals to get to where you want it to go, such as the sink or the toilet, that sort of thing. Well, solar is basically the same way. You can have all the solar panels that you want but if you don't have that containment center to hold it, it's not going to help you at all. Then you, your filter system is what we call a um, charge controller. Now this right here behind my head is a charge controller, all right? The solar or the liquid water will go into that, into those panels and they'll come out of that panel and go into this box. And this box determines how much of that power goes into the battery. It's very important because if too much goes in, you can flood your batteries, burn them up, catch fire. So this controls how much energy is going into your batteries, which your batteries are your containment, your catch-all, your storage for all the power that the sun delivers. Now, your batteries can only take a certain amount of power at a time. That's where the charge controller comes in. Now, I'm not really versed on the numbers or the amount of power each battery has or how much solar panels make in amps, watts, that sort of thing. This is simple basics, okay? You want all that stuff, go over to Will Prouse's website and he'll give it all to you. He's He's a, a Silicon Valley nut, and uh, he knows it all, he does it all, he scrutinizes it all, and he has a really good book out there that you can purchase called Solar, I think, for Dummies, or something very simple of that thing. Anyway, this is a very simplified solar explanation. Now, once that power goes through that charge controller, it deposits it into the containment, which is the batteries. Now, how do I get this power out of those batteries? Well, there's a couple ways to get it out. Those batteries are usually on a 12 volt system. Now there's six volt batteries, which we'll talk about too, which are called golf cart batteries. There's 24 volt batteries, which I know nothing about, have not got them in here. And there's lithium batteries, which I don't know anything about, but lithium also comes in 12, and I'm not sure if it comes in 24, and it may come in six, not sure, but I know it comes in 12. Anyway, basic standard system in a vehicle is 12 volts. So basic standard system we're gonna talk about is 12 volt system. So once you get the power in the containment, which is the batteries, you've gotta get it out to use it. Like I said, there's two ways to do it. You can use your basic 12 volt plugs that look like little cigarette plugs. I don't know if I have one handy here. Yeah, got one, we're in luck. This is kind of like what I'm talking about, a 12 volt plug. You can plug that in and it usually has a cord to it and it attaches to a device. Voila, you have power. Okay, that's all you need. Battery, plug, power, all right? That's it, simple, done, nothing else. You can plug this straight into 
a receiver that is attached to that battery with a inline fuse on it so that you don't burn it up and a right size cords and you now have power very simple done second way it's called an inverter and I can't show you that because mine's underneath my floor attached to the batteries now that inverter gets attached to the batteries it attaches to the positive cable and the negative cable the posts it attaches to the posts I'm sorry and then it has plug-ins on it you can plug that directly into an a cord and now you've got power and you got power galore right now okay now a lot of people will go to the lengths of putting in fuse boxes and running wires and running to different systems now the system I have on my van is very very simple it is basically extension cords however when I say cords I'm not talking the little household ones that burn up no 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 okay kind of like let's go back to our water deal the smaller your hose the more pressure of water going through the hose therefore the smaller the wire the more current and the more current the more that wire heats up that's a disaster for fire so what you want you don't want massive pressure you want a nice even flow of electrons going through your wire therefore the larger the wire the better less risk of fire less chance you're going to burn your van to the ground now there's things called fuses that go in line which means you cut that wire you put a fuse you add the wire together therefore the current has to go through the wire through the fuse and back into the wire if that fuse is too small and there's too much current coming the fuse will blow now that protects the rest of your equipment everything you add to your solar system should have a fuse running along the hot wire somewhere on it so that you have that added protection now like I said my solar system is very very simple I have four six volt golf cart batteries now the reason I have four of those those actually equal two 12 volt batteries six plus six is 12 okay basic math you need a 12 volt battery to run a 12 volt system so a six volt battery will not work so you have to put two of those batteries together to make one each battery has an amp hour on it and when you combine the two together it doesn't increase the amp hours it just makes them one battery so it's the same so let's say each six volt battery says 220 amp hours you put them together instead of it being 440 amp hours it's still 220 amp hours that's the way it works so I have four of those which equals two 12 volt batteries all right my solar dumps into my storage which is a 12 volt battery system I have set up and then it goes out of that system into my inverter and from my inverter I have a very heavy gauge extension cord coming off that has a series of plug-ins there are fuses all along that power cord so my series of plug-ins I have plugged in a refrigerator and I have plugged in a light and that's it that's my solar system period I'm not running an array of lights I don't need it I live in a dang van I don't need 20 puck lights in the ceiling I need one so I can see what I'm doing and it needs to be bright enough so I can see what I'm doing so I use a very bright LED light over my sink now if I want other lights in other places I have different ones that run off of what is called a USB plug which is a low volume a low electrical plug which doesn't use much power at all and I have another one of those in another area of the van which gives me light in that area so that's all I need in my van and mine's a big van it's 19 feet long by seven feet wide by six and a half feet tall so it's huge it's a big van and I don't need much more light than that if I want more I also have solar powered Lucy lights which cost me nothing to run which is a really good option to get solar powered uh, lights and solar powered equipment then you're not using anything at all 
So that's basically what I charge. Now you're talk I some of you're going to ask, okay, what about your computer? What about your phone? Blah 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 blah. Yes, I also have a plug that comes out of that um, extension cord that goes to my electronics. And I have a phone that I charge, another battery that I charge, a headset, and the computer. And I never charge them all at one time because I'm running off of uh, one cord. I'm not running off a separate system. So I'm managing what I'm charging, when I need to charge it, and, and that's the way that works. Now, what if there's not enough sun during the day? Uh, I also have a generator set up so that for like days like today and like yesterday where it's totally cloudy and raining, I can turn on the generator and that generator feeds uh, a battery charger which charges my batteries. So on a cloudy day, I can charge those batteries from a battery charger and not charge it from a solar system. So I have those two systems in here. I also have what they call shore power also in here which is a whole nother different ball game. Anyway, um, so I can charge my batteries on rainy days, cloudy days by using my generator and it doesn't take very long to top those off. I can charge my, sol my batteries on very sunny days with the solar I have. Um, I, I have found that a good rule of thumb is for every 12 volt battery you have or every 100 amp hours or whatever a battery you have, 100 watt solar panel should be able to charge that battery up sufficiently. Now, um, like I said, I'm not into all the numbers. I'm just using the one to one ratio. It's simple and it's safe. You're not putting too much into the battery. I mean, I could put lots more into that battery if I wanted to, I, have, I don't have the roof space for more solar panels. So I could put more in there, but then I risk having to find out all the numbers and how much my batteries can take and how much I'm putting out and making sure that it's all managed correctly. By doing it the one-to-one -one system, one battery, one solar panel, I'm good. You can do like up to two solar panels per battery and your charge controller will take care of, take care of that. Now a lot of people say, oh, you have to have an M MPPT or a PWM charge controller. Well, that depends on you. Smaller systems of one to four solar panels can get by on a PWM charge controller. Okay, so if you have one solar panel, you can get by with a 10, I think it's watts. Yeah, a 10 watt um, charge controller. If you've got two, a 20 watt. If you got three, a 30 watt. If you got four, you want to go to a 40 watt. Once you get up to four or larger, it's best to go to with an MPPT. If you got a small system, you don't need it. Okay. I'm going to tell you right now that I put all of the solar on top of my van and this nice charge controller right here, all of the wires and the brackets under $600. Now my batteries, my batteries, were $130 each, and I have four of them. So the batteries are your big price, your big cost. Don't skimp on your batteries. Well, thank you for traveling with me today, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Solar. If you have any more questions about solar or anything else, please uh, put them down in the uh, comments below and I will do my best to answer those questions. Um, I appreciate you being here. Thanks for all the well wishes while I was sick this week. Um, I'm still a little sick. My nose is still a little bit plugged up, but I'm feeling a whole lot better. Anyway, follow your heart, embrace your dreams, and cherish your life, and get out there and live today. We live today. Tomorrow's not promised. Get out there and live today. No matter what you do, go have fun. All right? Thanks again. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.